What's up, Blazioneers and Blazionettes? I'm going to be giving you my review for Legends of Tomorrow Season 3. So with that all being said, there, may be, there will be some spoiler mentionings in this review. For those of you who are not caught up yet, that is your warning. And I want to apologize in advance if I don't mention any of your favorite moments in this season. I'm going to point out my personal favorite moments of this season. So I, once again, apologize if they are not identical to yours. Just want to put that out there before I get this whole thing started. So here we go. So it takes a while to really figure out the premise of this season. Like what's the plot, you know, like basically going to be. And it centers around these totems where they're like to element totems. Like of totem of earth, fire, water, etc. And and that brings in, that brings Damien Dark back into into the show. And he's brought back to life. And here's the kicker. What here's what really threw me off is who brought him back. And it turned out to be the future version of his daughter that brought him back. And I did not see that coming. I was like, what? I mean, that was definitely a shocker. And I loved how how they played their roles in this season. And um, and I had said it before, and I'll say it again. Damian Dark is much better suited into this show and to. To the tone of this show than he ever was in Arrow. I mean, they really dropped the ball in, in first introducing him on Arrow. They should have just first introduced him on Legends, and then they would have just been good from there. And um, and also, and I gotta say, like um, you know how they do like when there's a new season, like there's gonna be new members coming in, and a couple members may leave or retire or get killed off or whichever. Um, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, like, Vixen kind of left in season two, and she kind of, you know, ended up coming back officially into the team. Well, through through uh, throughout the season, I, I mean, but I thought she was gonna be in a few episodes and then just take off. But actually, she we she stuck around you know, like through the rest of the season. But yeah, like, who ended up leaving or who was confirmed the leave was uh, Martin Stein and they confirmed that he was going to leave and they built it up to where he was getting ready to retire from basically being on the team and be, and retire from being Firestorm and being a part of Firestorm and to go be with his family and when we get to the crossover Crisis on Earth X instead they kill him off and when that happened it really kicked me in the gut I mean, it really, it, it really hit every character that was involved in that crossover. You really felt it when, like, when you saw that, like, you saw how hard it hit them, too. And, and that, you know, and that knife kept turning when we got over to the mid-season finale of this show, where you really see how it affected, you know, like, Jax, and then he ends up leaving the team. And then... When when I get back to the new members of the team, they, that's where we bring in Constantine and Kid Flash. I mean, like, they are awesome additions to the show, and um, every time they were both on screen, I enjoyed it. And um, it, I'm like, it's the least you know they can do since we're probably not going to get you know Constantine's show back. I mean, at least we get to see him at some point in the Arrowverse. So I'm glad that we get to see him at all. And I did not know the character Constantine, Constantine was bisexual. I was like, what? He is? They covered that up pretty good. And um, and they decided to play around with that a little bit in this show. And when you do see that he is bisexual, it's it's a funny moment. Like where he goes from hitting on Citizen Cold to, you know, sleeping with Sarah. So, yeah, that's basically Constantine in a nutshell, I, I suppose. <laughs> and, um, and, and... Also, like with the other new members, like with Ava, every time she was on screen with Sarah, I was like, will you two just kiss and get it over with? It's obvious that you two like each other. Just make out, get it over with, come on. And I was rooting for them to get together too, since day one. So when they finally did, I was like, there you go, there you go. You guys are good for each other, come on. <laughs> and um, since we are talking about new characters, um, Zari, I was not really attached to. Um, I mean, I didn't even think she was going to be a legit member of the team. I thought she was just going to be there to help out a little bit. But turns out she became a legend. So 
I'm gonna have to rewatch the season again and try to focus more on her, and um, and see if my attitude changes after that. And also, um, so like, and then, and and then with the main villain of the season ends up being Mollus or Malus, however you say his name. And when we see his true form, it's terrifying. I mean, like, that's one thing that this show has that I like, where it has a, a selection of really good villains that they can play around with, from Vandal Savage all the way to Mollus. And, um, so, and, yeah, like, when it leads up to Rip Hunter's sacrifice, it probably was the right way to go, because they didn't seem like they knew what what they wanted to do with him after he stepped down as the leader in season one what they did with him in season two was okay but when it gets to season three in this season i was not really a fan of of um what they were doing with him at all so i'm like uh, so probably so if they were to kill him off in season one like like in the by the end of season one then i would then it would kick me you know like in the gut just as much as um much as as it would have in in this season like when they did that but it was nowhere near as emotional for me th than losing firestorm so i mean i'm not saying that you know i don't like rip hunter and all that but i do like him but i feel like his character was kind of wasted af after he stepped down as um captain i'm like they didn't really come up with any really good ideas for for him after that and then Fast forward all the way to the final act, or to the final battle of the season, where they finally have all the legends have to face Mollus, and they put all the totems together, and then it forms Bibbo of all things, that fucking stuffed animal, whatever his name is. I'm like, what? I mean, when that happened, I mean, it made me, it made me giggle, and 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 I was caught off guard. Like, what? How is that going to beat Mollus? And it turns out that, you know, Bibbo did really, he beat Mollus's ass. And I was just like, okay, if you wanted to go the random route, um, you could have done Captain Planet. That would have been cool to watch. Or even the Avatar. Like that, you know, those both of those characters are based around elements that are put together, you know. I mean, come on. But anyway, in, in comparison to the other two seasons... I'd say this is the most entertaining um, and has more, you know, like it has more flavor to the show now. Like when they have Kid Flash and Constantine thrown into the mix. And um, and as all seasons seem to end with this show, when they solve a problem, um, it seems like they, oh, they caused a much bigger one for them to face like in the next season. So that's basically how it ended. And um and it's cool that Constantine will be there to help them with it. You know, like he'll be a series regular along with Kid Flash. So that's going to be freaking awesome. And right now it's at the bottom of the list of my favorite shows in the Arrowverse. But it has the potential to move its way up and knocking another show of the Arrowverse, in the, of the Arrowverse down to its place. And then it work its way up onto my on my list of favorite shows as I'm ranking them. You know what I mean? So with it all being said, this gets uh, three and a half chair spins out of five. So here we go. One, two, three and a half chair spins. So if you guys enjoyed my review for this season of Legends of Tomorrow, make sure you thumb up the video and click subscribe if you're new to the channel. And if there is a little bell there, you know, that will help you notify when I upload, upload, a, upload a video, excuse my grammar, go ahead and click that bell and then that way you'll know when I'm dropping the video. So, um, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video.